Come on, sing the wonder. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. song says when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be but aren't you glad we can rejoice before we get there come on now aren't you glad that we can praise the Lord before we get there come on somebody amen I'm telling you I've told you before this is just dress rehearsal for glory if you can't praise down here you're going to be real uncomfortable up there amen praise the Lord because I believe there are going to be people coming up and running beside you going whoa Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be happy to be home. No more devil to have to fight. No more sickness to have to deal with. Come on, get to see my loved ones that's going on. Get to see my precious mama again. Hallelujah. Come on now. I'm going to get excited. Glory to God. 
<laughs> Amen. Praise God. I want our ushers, if they would, to come tonight. Praise the Lord. It's an honor to be back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I tell you, I, I still ain't got over what happened yesterday in that conference. Uh, praise God. I'm telling you, the, the bishop done a phenomenal job, Brother Ronnie Hepperly and, and Leonard Albert. Wonderful, wonderful job with that, I'm telling you. Uh, if you get a chance, go on the Church of God website and uh, listen. They've done this thing already. This is six times they've done it. they got three more times to do it. Uh, so they have, you, you can catch the sessions from their first time at, at uh, South Cleveland and uh, really get a hold of it. Amen. It'll set you on fire for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Mike, would you stand and bless the offering tonight? Amen, amen, amen. Did you come to worship him tonight, church? Did you come to sing his praises tonight? Did you come with breath in your lungs tonight? If you're here and you're alive and you're breathing, I got news for you. Whether you mean to or not, you are praising the Lord. His breath lives in your body. So you're praising something, whether it's him or whatever worry is in your mind whatever sickness may be in your body, whatever sin you may be stuck in, you're praising something. But I want to challenge you tonight to put your focus on Him. Put your heart and your mind on Him. Because every single battle we face, it belongs to Him. And He has already won the victory. He has already paid every price that needs to be paid so that we can be victorious. And that's what this next song is all about. Y'all sing it with us. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So this is how we do it. So we There's nothing impossible to you. This is what I love.
You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. He's an almighty fortress, and he goes before us. tell somebody's doubt in this place one more time tonight that he's an almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our God you shine in the shadows you win every battle no no nothing can stand against the power of he's an almighty an almighty fortress and you go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power. One more time. He's an almighty fortress. And he goes before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Somebody shout. Somebody shout for glory in this place. Come on. God's won the battle. God's won the battle. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
yehe ke hela hasan dala la maha i kando do donde de de be hisan dele le maha sa well glory well glory oh hallelujah hallelujah Oh, you might have drugged something through the door tonight you need victory over. Won't you just go ahead and shout one more time? Come on. Come on. Glory to God. <laughs> Come on. He's an almighty fortress. Praise God. David said he's my shield. He's my buckler. He's my high tower. Glory to God. I'll run to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless you, Lord. Glory to God. While you're standing tonight, go with me to the word of God, please. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 29 through 31. Glory to God. Acts chapter 4. Verses 29 through 41, through 31, excuse me, 29 through 31. Now your servants, that with all boldness may speak your word, by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began and they spoke the word of God with boldness. I want to read verse 31 again. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled. Somebody shout filled. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spake the word of God with boldness. I want to minister tonight on Holy Spirit, blow on us again. Holy Spirit, blow on us again. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands this way and let's pray. Father, as we humbly come before your presence tonight, I give you praise and glory and honor. And I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in this house, Lord to see your magnificent power and glory. Father, to feel your presence. I want to thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming into this place tonight and being my helper. Glory to God for being the anointing that I need to preach this word with boldness. Lord, I pray that you not only set upon me, but Lord, set upon each and every one in this place like you did. Lord, on the day of Pentecost and here in Acts chapter 4, you set upon each of them and all were filled, Father. I pray, God, that we all be filled again. Blow on us again one more time, Lord, because we need a second wind tonight. And, Lord, we need to give you the praise, the glory, the honor for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. Glory to God. Being Pentecostal, most of us have heard or are probably familiar with the verses from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And in that passage of Scripture, the Holy Spirit comes and fills 120 hungry hearts and tongues like fire come and sit down on top of every head. The Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and cloven tongues like as fire set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. And I want to tell you folks this is when the church of the Lord Jesus Christ was empowered with supernatural power from on high. The power of the Holy Spirit came on them and in them Glory to God. And this power and this anointing came upon them. Glory to God. And when it 
did, it put them directly in the line of fire. Can I tell you folks that if there's one thing the enemy does not want you to do, he does not want you to praise God. But glory to God, number two, he does not want you to get anointed. Praise God, the devil does not want you to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. If there's a one thing that he does not like about a Pentecostal church, it's when Pentecostal folks start letting the Holy Ghost have his way and flowing through us and using us as as the Holy Ghost gives the other. He does not like it when people surrender to the third person of the Godhead, our helper. Oh, come on now. Amen. And, but when that happened, they got put directly in the line of fire. And extreme spiritual warfare began to break out against them. You see, this infant church was thrust into the heat of the battle. And they experienced great persecution. Glory to God. And by the time they got here in Acts chapter 4, they had been beaten up pretty badly. Lord God, the Bible says that they assembled themselves together and they prayed. And this is what they said. Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Then he said, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and speak the word of God with boldness. Do you see? See what happened right there. They got another win, Lord. Somebody shout, I need another win. Glory to God. You see the same wind that blew through the upper room in Acts chapter 2 was blowing again in Acts chapter 4. I love what these people do. They didn't go hide in the corner and say, start complaining and whipping and whining about everything they were going through. Lord, look at their threatening. They're talking about us. They're, they're being bad to us. Oh, they're whipping us. Oh, the devil's having a heyday on us. No, what he said was, Lord, behold their threatenings. Lord God, but that as far as they took it with the threatenings Lord we want you to see the threatenings but what we want you to do is understand and know that the threatenings ain't going to stop the Holy Ghost filled church amen it's not going to stop a child of God that is full of the Holy Ghost we want to stand up and speak your word with boldness amen we want signs and wonders to follow us as we speak the name of Jesus glory to God as I was getting ready for this sermon I heard the Lord say to me preach to them and tell them there's another wind coming glory to God a new chapter a new anointing for your people come on now the Lord said that many of his people have reached a point of exhaustion. And glory to God, when I look around, I see children of God. I see Christians today that are exhausted. Oh, glory to God. As, as, as I was praying, he spoke to me and he said that the spirit of the python has attacked many of the believers. And that spirit is, is sent, oh, glory to God, by the devil to steal the breath out of God's people. You see, the python doesn't kill with vengeance. Them. The python kills its prey by coiling around it to its victim and constricting and squeezing them. Every time the victim takes a breath in and exhale, the python constricts and keeps doing that until the victim can't breathe anymore. You see, the python literally suffocates the victim. It squeezes the very life out of it. And when I was praying and the Lord was speaking to me, I heard the Lord say that many of his children have been under attack today by the spirit of the python. But I want to tell you folks, uh, oh glory to God, as it says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, the Bible says that in the last days the devil's going to speak great words against the Most High and will wear out the saints of the Most High. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you what I'm seeing is that wearing out. Yeah, that word wear out means to afflict. It means to harass. It means to exhaust. It means to push to fainting or weariness, to push under continuous pressure or strain. I see amen the Lord said I see my people in that position but you tell them to hang on cause there's another wind coming Lord of God I know that there's been a lot of people 
under attack. Glory to God. It's been continuous, nonstop, relenting. It seems like there's no relief. And it seems like one thing after another. You've been under pressure physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And every time you get the victory in one area, one, one area it seems like the devil hits you in another area. You see, the devil's trying to drive you to the point of exhaustion. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't give up. Glory to God. You see, he's trying to wear you out. Look at your neighbor and tell him we know the plan of the enemy. You see, he's trying to squeeze the very life, the breath out of us. You see, the breath is life. Breath is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. You see, if you have no life in you, then you're no threat to the devil. Oh, you see, the valley of dry bones was no threat to the devil. But when the wind, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit began to blow, there stood up a mighty army that conquered hell. I'm telling you, it's time for the church to say, Holy Spirit, blow one more time. Woo! One hundred and twenty discouraged followers of Jesus in an upper room in Jerusalem were no threat to, to the devil. But all of a sudden, a rushing mighty wind of God began to blow and fill them all with the Holy Ghost and commission them with tongues of fire. And they turned the known world, as I said this morning, upside down. Praise God. I'm telling you, we need another wind. Somebody shout another wind. You see, that's what the devil's afraid of. The breath and the fire of God. Oh, see, the devil's not afraid of our programs, our singing, our preaching, our church attendance, our talents. Even our knowledge of the Bible doesn't scare him. But, oh, but what gives the devil nightmares and sends shockwaves through hell is when the church gets alive. Oh, lean over there and shake your neighbor and say, are you alive? <laughs> you see, when the preacher's alive, when the singers are alive, when the ushers are alive, the greeters are alive, the bus drivers are alive, when the, oh, when the sound person is alive, hell gets nervous. You see, when everything we do is driven by the wind of God, everything changes. See, when the wind blew in the book of Genesis, an earth that was dark and void suddenly came to life. Trees, grass, birds, and fish, animals suddenly, suddenly came into being where there was nothing. When the wind began to blow, oh, come on, somebody. You see, it was a wind from God that divided the Red Sea for the children of Israel to cross over. And it was a wind from God that closed that same Red Sea on Pharaoh and all his armies. Come on now. I'm telling you, God's going to let that wind blow again. Hallelujah for his children. Oh, God, it's going to blow blessings upon us, but it's going to blow cursing upon the enemy. Oh, come on now. You see, it was a wind from God that dried up the waters from the earth after the flood. It was a wind from God that brought the plague of locusts upon Egypt. And it was a wind from God that took them away. It was a wind from God that brought in the quail of feet, the complaining Israelites. It was a wind from God that brought the rain that ended the three and a half year drought. It was a wind from God that turned the valley of dry bones into a mighty army, praise God. And it was the wind of God that blew through that upper room on the day of Pentecost and turned the a bunch of broken hearted discouraged disciples into the greatest force of God this world has ever seen for God amen and it give birth to the New Testament church you see you see what our scripture does here it blows that theology of some Pentecostals away that you get filled once and that's all you need. I've heard folks, you got to understand, folks, I was, born in, I was born and raised in a Baptist church. I didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost. 
Those preachers didn't preach nothing. They, they, they got a great salvation message. But they didn't preach nothing about the Holy Spirit. I didn't even know he was my helper, Brother Roger. I didn't even know that he was my comforter and counselor. Glory to God. But when I got in the church of God and got in a Pentecostal church, glory to God, that's all that preacher wanted to talk about was the Holy Ghost. And I understand why now. Because folks in the world we live in, we need him, praise God. We got to have him. Glory to God. We need him every day because of the things we face and the places we go. We need the Holy Spirit, glory to God, in our life. And I'm going to tell you, it's not just a one-time infilling, glory to God. But the word Jesus said it like this in John 7. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this he spake of the Holy Ghost that as of yet had not been given at that time. Listen, if this is a river, glory to God, I've got to keep it full. I've got to keep it flowing. And I'm the source of that river, Brother Paul, comes from the throne of God. Come on now. I'm telling you, it comes from the Holy Ghost. So we have got to keep a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit every day of our life. Yeah, I thank God for the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit. I got one night woo, at the old Bone Cave Church of God. I'll never forget it. Lord God, sitting in that altar, that pastor got up and preached, Brother Cunningham from Mooningham. The only reason, that's the only reason I can remember his name. Because it rhymes. And I come to the left side of that altar. Brother Ken Angel was the pastor. Glory to God. And I'd already started pastoring. And I've been seeking for the Holy Spirit. And I got down, that, that, that pastor, Brother Cunningham, was preaching on do I please God or do I please man. And I said, you know what, Lord? I'm tired of pleasing man. I've heard the advice of man all my life. I've had this one, that one, and another one. Give me their advice and tell me what they think. Now, Lord, you fill me and tell me what you think. Glory to God. And I'd been seeking for the Holy Ghost before that night. Don't get me wrong. Glory to God. I'd been seeking for it. And I'd roll from one wall, plumb to the other wall. I cleaned the carpet with my clothes in front of the altar. Praise God. I'd weep. I'd cry. I'd roll. I'd snot. I'd fold. I'd stammer. Glory to God. But I just couldn't get it out. But I made my mind up that night. I wanted the wind of the Holy Spirit. I wanted the anointing of my God more than I wanted my next breath. I wanted him more than I needed my next heartbeat. Lord God, if I died right there in that altar, that's fine. I'm going to have the Holy Ghost before I die. And when I got in that altar and I began to pray and they laid hands on me, I didn't roll anymore. I got up from that speaking in other tongues, drunk in the Holy Ghost, praise God. And I thank God for that initial time. And I want to tell you, there's been other moments, glory to God, in my ministry, Brother Paul, that I've had to go back to the well. There's been other times, Brother Brent, glory to God, when I begin to feel a little dry. As a Pentecostal preacher, we give and we give and we give and we give. Come on now. But I'm glad we got a God who gives and gives and gives and gives and gives. Whew. Hallelujah. And there's been many times just like these bu this bunch here in Acts chapter 4. Lord God went back into that upper room. They've been threatened. Lord God, if you notice what they did in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John see the man at the gate, beautiful hill. They walk in. The man is leaping and jumping. Everybody in the temple is having themselves a time looking at him because they know who he was. And But the people of the Sanhedrin court and the Pharisees and the Sadducees don't like what's happening. And with that, I will say this. Not everybody's going to like you getting spiritual. Because when you get spiritual, you upset their quietness. There's a 
person come by me yesterday. I don't see how anybody could sit in this place yesterday with what was going on. Glory to God. I had one person come by me yesterday and say, I need a blanket in there. I said, you want me to get you a pillow too? That's what you need is a checkup. You need to go back and find out what, you need to pull the dipstick out and find out where your oil level's at. Come on now. I'm telling you, we need to get another dose of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Praise God. We need to get some more. Somebody shout, there's another win. Glory to God. I'm telling you. Oh, hallelujah. In our text, it tells us many of the same disciples were gathered together for prayer because of their faith and because of their boldness and their testimony of Jesus Christ. They'd been persecuted. In fact, they'd been threatened and commanded not to preach or teach about Jesus in the name of Jesus anymore. But they left rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for his namesake. And then instead of gathering together and complaining and comparing their wounds, they begin to pray and God moved God come down and fill all of them one more time. Praise God. You see, they got another win. They got a refilling. They got a fresh anointing, a fresh fire, and a fresh baptism. And then you go into Acts chapter 5 and verse 12. And we read, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. You see, I know by the Spirit I'm talking to some people tonight who are tired, who are worn out. Many of you have even been to the point of exhaustion. You feel like you've had the breath knocked out of you. Some of you feel like you're running on empty. You love God, but the Spirit of Python has squeezed the breath out of you. But that devil has been exposed and the spirit's being broken and right now God is sending a second wind in here to you Woo! somebody shout a second wind oh, look at your neighbor and say I'm about to breathe again oh somebody just needs to Inhale and exhale. <laughs> you see, the devil thought he had you die, thought he had you killed. The devil thought he had you done. But you just need to look at him and go. <laughs> Whoo! I'm gonna tell you, never before. Has the American church needed more of a fresh wind of Pentecost than now? Oh, glory to God, come on, we need another wind from heaven. A fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. I've come to tell you tonight, you're not going under, you're going over. You're not going to be defeated because you are victorious in the name of Jesus. Come on, tonight we're putting the serpent under our feet where he belongs. Somebody praise the Lord in this house. Oh, praise God, right where you are. Lift up your hands and begin to breathe. Come on. The anointing is destroying the very yoke that has you tied up. There's a fresh anointing coming your way. There's a second wind that God is breathing breathing upon you right now. My help just walked in the house. Woo-wee. Come on now, your help just walked in. I felt the rush of the wind come past me. Oh, who's he? Come on, who did he come in here after tonight? Come on, I know there's some of you in here. Glory to God, you feel like you've run out of gas. Listen to me. It's not a sin to run out of gas. Amen. We've all been there. It's not a sin to run out of breath. Glory to God, the sin is in believing that you can't, come on now, that you can't get back up, that you can't do anything. Glory to God, that you can do it only in your self-effort. Amen. You neglect the power and the presence of God, and you just keep trudging on in your own strength and flesh. There's where the sin lies. But somebody needs to lift their hand and say, I can't do it on my own. I need the wind of the Holy Spirit praise God (laughs) 
You see, I don't care how spiritual you are or how anointed you are. You, you will at some point in time run out of gas. You'll hit the wall, and you're going to need another wind. Glory to God. I'm going to close. But I don't need any music. We just need the Holy Spirit. You see, sometimes I think we, we think we can't move without music. But when the call of the Holy Spirit comes, that's when you better move. You see, I got some good news for you. The same Holy Spirit that filled that upper room in Acts chapter 2 was the same Holy Spirit that filled that room in Acts chapter 4. And he's the same Holy Spirit that's walking in this church tonight. Come on now. He's still the same Holy Spirit that wants to fill this room and, and fill you and give you a second wind and a fresh start in a new chapter. Cool God, you just need to come to this altar tonight and tell him, Lord, I'm ready for a second wind. I want a fresh start. I want a new beginning. Do I have anybody that will step out and say, Here I am, Lord. Fill me again.